Welcome to File Exchange, a channel dedicated to elevating the voices of artists, writers, and curators who have a focus on art made with 3D software. This channel allows you to be a fly on the wall as we share philosophies, tools, and tips revolving around these 21st century tools in art. I'm Colette Robbins, and this is my co-host, Sophie Khan. And as hybrid digital analog sculptors, we are always excited to see what working files are behind the art of our guests. And I'm going to pass along to Sophie to introduce our guest today. All right. Our guest this week is Mattia Castellano, um, one of Colette's Pratt colleague and my former studio mate from the Elizabeth Foundation, where I believe he's speaking to us today. Um, he was born in Naples in 1981. His work explores physical and sensory perceptions of its viewers, evoking experiences that are fully immersive, sensorially embodied, and psychologically heightened. His art practice draws from anthropology, ecology, biology, neuroscience, and informatics, and focuses on the relations and tensions between nature, science, and technology. And Mattia is currently assistant professor at the Department of Digital Arts at Pratt Institute and a critic at RISD in Providence. So welcome. We're so excited to hear from you today. Thank you so much, Sophie. Thank you so much, Colette. And um, yeah, I'm super excited myself uh, to, to try this new format uh, where, um, yeah, I'm just very excited to share what I'm working on and just even to just, just having a conversation with you guys, uh, especially you, Sophie, I haven't seen you. I, I think I haven't seen you since my uh, birthday party. <laughs> yes. That was back in May. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which, which was really funny. Like... So I had, I had no I chance to yeah. thank you for coming to my birthday party, actually. So <laughs> take this chance here. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right. So, what I'm working on. Um, I'm working on on a um, on a mixed reality uh, a project uh, that I called um, a project of a uh, 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 in immersive gastronomy. Um, immersive gastronomy uh, for me means to use taste and food as a way to tell stories and to create experiences, uh, specifically for uh, virtual reality and mixed reality. So it's a project uh, that I started. I founded a company uh, that is specifically focused on this kind of experiences. And, and now um, with my team, we are basically working on a new experience uh, that will happen at Super Blue in Miami the first week of the of December. So, so during the- Oh, um, that's coming week. up. It's coming up. <laughs> Definitely. Do you want to? Do you want to share your screen? I yep. think you were talking about uh, the drawings. Yeah, uh, I'll share the screen. Um, and for the ones of you who are listening and they're coming to Miami, please, 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 you should come to check this experience. It's called um, Area of Banquets RMX, and. Nice. Um, and here is just the, the website, actually. So, okay. but it's gonna be in collaboration with Super Blue, which is um, an amazing uh, institution in Miami. They're focused on in, interactive installations and uh, in, in immersive arts. Yeah, amazing. And it's and meta um, uh, meta. Open Arts actually is also involved. They're sponsoring and they're presenting the the project. And um, very and of cool. Course, if you guys are interested, of course, you know, um, I can discuss more about this. But uh, yeah, this is um, will be opening on the twenty eighth actually. For, so it's from November twenty eighth to December fourth. Yeah. Wow. So I was I was fortunate enough to get to experience this when right. the James Beard Foundation and is it is this a similar um has it are there changes in the VR environment from that iteration to this one or is it um an extent kind of similar yeah um yeah. absolutely uh I think you you came to the uh, James Beard right or yes 
Yeah, nice. I did. Yes. So for people who have not uh, heard of this project before, this was really, for me, like the most fascinating VR artwork that I've experienced because it was, so just to kind of set the scene a little bit, it, you, um, it's set in a kind of a restaurant setting, like a very, very private restaurant. I think it was just, you have a few tables, is that right? Was it a few tables? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it was only an experience for, for guests uh, at, the, yeah. at the time. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And then we, my, I did it. I went with my husband and you eat in a VR headset. So while you're in an immersive visual environment um, there, and you have a little kind of the plate that you hold, like just getting food into my mouth was really <laughs> a real challenge, but it was, totally fascinating and there's sound also right there there's sound design and then this um and text it was like I've never experienced anything like that that was mm -hmm. really really amazing um and you only I only found out you only, and maybe this is the same here too like what I ate mm -hmm. afterwards because you can't yeah. see it and then what you see in the VR is something completely different so yeah. that's so cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh it's a project that actually is inspired by uh, a, a book actually by the, uh, the futurist uh, uh, uh cookbook mm -hmm. basically the futurist um it said it, it's, it's, it's this italian um uh, um avant-garde that wrote this little uh, uh this little booklets in 1932 Mm -hmm. and and they can in, in this little book they came up with crazy recipes in a very uh, surreal style mm -hmm. uh mixing you know flavors and sounds and words so in a so in a really you know almost a uh, very first mixed reality you know um, a very first uh uh, uh, uh multisensorial um experience if yeah. if you will yeah. now we are sort of used to you know uh we knew we knew media we are very much used you know to enter immersive environments where we have audio you know interaction and visuals but in 1932 um they were really among the first in uh at least in italy to think uh, uh you know this this absurd and very experimental dinners as uh, um events and yeah. they were mixing painting, performance, theater. Uh, so, you know, they were really coming up with, with new ideas on how to experience food. Yeah. And for me, it was a super, super interesting inspiration. And so I started to think, okay, how can I shift something with sensorial? And this also my work is very, is very focused on that too. And uh, I was thinking, okay, how we, can, how we can do that, you know, with a medium that really um, touches on all your senses. And I think the art, VR is one of those mediums, right? VR, it's, it's, it's an extension almost. So what you hear with sound, but also an extension of what you can uh, see, of course, you know, through your screen. And but also it's, it's such a powerful medium when it comes down to treat your senses, right? To yeah, treat your yeah. brain. And I figured out that, <clears throat> I figured out that tastes and flavors, um, it hasn't been explored in, in VR as much, right? There's a lot of interesting work when it comes down, you know, to do visuals and sound, but, uh, the experience of uh, taste and food, it's uh, its one of those things that has been explored. So this is where it started. We started almost six years ago now. Right. And um, and it's been an interesting journey. So every new, every new time that we experience, you know, every new time that we propose and every every new time that we show Aero Banquets, it's, it's always different. It, it, it's always improving. Mm -hmm. um so yeah it's it's been an amazing it's a super interest yeah it's been an amazing journey so far yeah and so it um you know we've Colette and I were talking earlier about the real the breadth of artists that we've had on the channel and some are will work entirely solo you know they won't collaborate sort of they it every every element in their work is kind of done by them and then um I think it's really interesting to have a practice where there's no way that you could possibly do all this on your own so you're collaborating <laughs> right. with chefs and you're collaborating um you know obviously there's a team um yeah. involved and so I'm curious to hear how you built that team too like how that evolved and and what that's been like as is a kind of collaborative relationship absolutely and um and I think, as you say, it really comes down to what kind of artist. I mean, 
how you like to uh, to sort of work like in my work i um i'm not interested like in speak about arts in, in in itself you know i feel that a lot of times the um art world in itself can become very self self regard you know very close in itself i i'm a very multidisciplinary artist meaning that i just have a lot of joy to collaborate with people mm. from all over from all over different yeah. disciplines i work with scientists with neuroscientists you know with um you know with architects designers philosophers physicists um mm -hmm. and chefs <laughs> i think chefs yeah. is um yeah i think you know food is really one of the most interesting art medium because it's really something that you <laughs> that becomes yourself in a way i mean yeah. food is really is really something that you eat and and, and then it becomes um it becomes you it literally becomes yeah. it literally, literally becomes part of you so so um, i've been very much interested in this idea of like creating uh, an artwork that you can ingest and then and, and then you can uh assimilate and really and, and be really part of you and and i did that with some kinetic installations that were creating food you know in a lot of very different ways but um this is the first time that um uh, that i'm working with chefs but of course, as you said, it's it's a project that really involves uh, a lot of people, you know, from mm -hmm. developers who are helping, you know, to make sure that the experience in VR works perfectly. Uh, we also worked uh, with um, Gail uh, uh, Simmons, who mm -hmm. is the star mm -hmm. of uh, um, Top Chef. Oh, so, okay. so she gave us her voice and she's this, um, you know, She's the uh, na narrator that uh, basically brings the audience through the entire experience. Right. Um, I had help basically writing the uh, the scripts uh, of the experience, and then basically I started very much by myself in a way. Um, as I started, oh. I was working on um, I was working on an on an art on an artist. Uh, residency in China uh, at the time at uh, the Kronos Art Center which, yeah. are, which is a very interesting art and media gallery oh, in Shanghai yeah. Shanghai yeah Shanghai yeah, yeah exactly. maybe I think I maybe did. you know right I think I visited when I was in Shanghai yeah 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 yeah, yeah and it's a very interesting uh, I'm sure the space is still there the team there is is it's really it's really amazing and they have this they call basically uh, a new artist every six months mm -hmm. they give them a little bit of money and they basically allow you access to their you know to their space to their equipment and I had these crazy ideas I actually was talking you know with a friend of mine uh, at the time I was living in LA and uh, Jinson that's his name and mm. he was pretty much the first that I knew experimenting with food in virtual reality and so we were we were exchanging a lot of uh, ideas. His approach is more on the scientific side. He is very much interested in see how we can cure, you know, um, eating the, the disorders, for example, through VR, mm -hmm. which also is a very interesting, yeah, it's a very interesting topic. I, like I would love to learn more about that too. Yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a super interesting topic. So he, I don't know if he's still working on that, but he has this uh, this collective called uh project uh, uh, uh nourished so something like that mm. um and he had an amazing team with like you know with no no nutritionists and uh designers you know and really approaching the team of you know why 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 we have a lot of um eating disorders that we are having in this society and how by tricking our brain or for example uh, by you know by using vr uh if there is any right. way that we can solve those those eating disorders so his research was super super interesting but i was coming more like on an artist you know from an artistic approach you know i'm just just super happy to to think about food in terms of you know as a language in itself mm. and and how we can add you know the experience of taste into a multisensorial experience and now um, and also it was very much interesting uh in the relationship between what we see and what we taste literally right because of course taste is not is not really something that we that our brain 
construct in our mouth, but it's but but it's uh, you know it's an overlapping uh, is is an overlapping of um, many different senses. So yeah. of course you know by seeing things and by even by some you know how things in an environment may sound or just being by the experience of being in a particular environment versus other environments, how that affects uh, the perception of taste. Because that was what was so striking to me about it um, is, and I don't know if you, do you have visuals of the video that mm -hmm. we saw in VR? Yeah, it, that, that would be really great to see as well. But it was so striking to me that like 90% of the time I would eat something and Dave and I would be saying like, what is this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> because when you don't have a menu that's like, well, this is a foam with cardamom and shavings of, you know, mm -hmm, turmeric mm -hmm. infused tuna or whatever, you're eating, like, we're so governed by our vis by the visuals and also by the text. And when that's disrupted, um, yeah, that was, that was fascinating. Also mm -hmm. our memories and associations with different food yeah. and like the visuals yeah. of the food or like the, the environment that the food's being eaten, eaten yes. in. Um, I think it's like, it affects us more than we think. Um, mm. So that is that is really interesting to disrupt that process mm. um, and to use these particular tools to do that is I Absolutely. find really interesting, yeah. Absolutely. Memory, but also the way how we describe things, right? The way how mm. people describe your menu and the way how we, we, we expect particular things. So we never showed the the uh, menu at first. You only have the choice to, yeah. to either having a, a vegan or a normal menu. And yeah. I think that's exactly what is interesting to me is that your your expectations are completely um, zero. It's, you know, there is no expectation yeah. whatsoever. You have no idea. <laughs> and so there's a lot of trust um, involved in the experience. And there's a lot of thought, you know, there's a lot of, that goes into how 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 we build that trust as uh, you know as creators of the experience and that goes into the the design of the physical space as well as the design of the entire experience from the moment that you walk into the space but also i really like as an artist i really like uh the condition that the the, the your audience may have of feeling a little bit unsettled <laughs> feeling a little bit out of, of balance in terms of expectations and um and really feeling not 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 of course being danger or anything like that but like having your senses a little bit more tightened a little bit more um sensitive so that anything that is coming to your senses is is you have a, a higher um awareness awareness yeah, of what's absolutely. happening because when you've got a headset you're strapped to a headset you can't see you know like absolutely you're, and you're in that world yeah yeah if you want to go ahead and play the video we can let it like play in the background too um but that's and that was I haven't seen an artwork that really exploited that in VR in a in a satisfying way you oh, know interesting um, actually this is amazing for me to see it because I couldn't see it when I was there exactly you couldn't <laughs> it see it what's happening but I I was like had this like VR blindfold on uh, you couldn't see and also this actually is what we were doing in Shanghai I'm just gonna go back really quick yeah in Shanghai we had a uh, chef's table so so you were basically sitting around the table and the chef was really plating in in front of you um and of course it's all about you know how we perceive taste in terms of colors and shapes and forms so um i came up with a, <laughs> a system where um uh, maybe a specific uh, uh flavor profiles were basically um, assigned to specific colors or specific shapes and forms. Mm -hmm. So for example, this is what you will actually see during the experience in VR, but yeah. this is exactly what you will, what you eat pretty much. Yes. Uh, right, so it's interesting that there's, there are, you know, I'm seeing the associations, there's a seascape and obviously you're eating some kind of, you know, you're eating seafood and then you see the ocean. So it's like, it's suggesting it to you, but it's not as literal. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. let me, I want to ask too about the little, the food containers. It looks like they're 3D, mm. 
right? Like a little mm-hmm, mm-hmm. project. How did you arrive at that? Yeah. Because you that's can't fun... see color either, right, when you're blind. So you need something. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You need something to care. Yeah, I mean, and that really went through many different phases and sort of followed the, um, you know, the evolution of VR in a way. Mm-hmm. At the beginning, we started in Shanghai, for example. I don't know if you can see here. We were basically tracking everything with the motion capture system. Uh, okay. So we had a crazy expensive motion capture system by um, wow by um, OptiTrack. Yeah, OptiTrack is a company that has this very expensive cameras that you put in 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 the room, and the cameras basically see this. They are able to see this little. Um, um the infrared lights uh, little points mm-hmm. and it's the same te- technology that you use also in uh, 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 motion capture for example when you do mm. motion capture in films or in cgi right and so we had this super complicated system with a bunch of cameras everywhere and we were basically <laughs> tracking the uh you know this this uh cup that yeah. i called uh uh, uh it's a it's a vessel. I like to call it vessel because for me is and the, the way that you eat is very uh, futurist style. The, the the futurists they were completely against any cutlery. They were against. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> so right. you eat in this very primordial way where you it's like a cup. So basically, you take your hand and then in a very funny way you just your yeah. bites into your mouth. Yeah. It's just like a well, very like almost <laughs> gone down my front. Like I think I caught it. Into- yeah. Yeah, it takes a little yeah. bit of getting used yeah. to. Yeah, it. it takes suddenly a lot of time to figure out. And and then what is cool to me, though, after you take the hand of it, is that it's just it's just like reprogramming your sense in a way, it's just like learning how to eat uh, in a different way, right? Because, of course, we are not used. We are so used to calories and forks and spoons. Yeah. This is literally not really heavy in your hand and, um, and eat it. So it's, uh, it's a process, but, and it's very... It's very primordial in a way. It's, it's very, it's very clunky sometimes too. But uh, but I love no, I really, really love it in terms of the relationship that you start to get with this with this object. And um, mm. but we sort of started here uh, with this very expensive thing, and then we moved into into simpler stuff. For example, when we were doing at James Beard, this is, this is actually where you were, Sophie, I think, yes. right? Yeah. And here we were using the. Um, the um, Oculus Quest that I read that basically has yeah. sensors in in their headset, and so so everything was very way more simple and easy yeah. to. Mm-hmm. So the quest, and we are, and then yeah. you have the hand tracking as well, right? So that and then yeah, that's right. what you're saying with your own hand. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You have your hands. In theory, what you could do is just to, you know, to walk around. So um, so the entire physical space is basically tracked to the virtual space mm-hmm. and um this is actually this is really funny this is the youngest guest uh, that, we, that we ever had so adorable <laughs> he was in korea he was seven yeah oh my so god he, had a, he was having a lot of fun uh, i know i want to bring my kids to miami and let them like absolutely <laughs> are, you, are you coming to uh, miami i think i am this year sadly okay. No, I, oh I, no! Oh, uh, I, uh, I don't know. I have to say, I would love to. I'd love yeah. to. Yeah, can't do it all. Yeah, no, no, can't no, no, do no. it all. Only one thing at a time. Yeah, That's my yeah. philosophy on being an artist. Is there's yeah. always so much to do. It's too much. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I have a question in terms of just kind of like how you got into using VR and 3D as a medium for these projects in the first place. Like I understand the like disruption of the experience. It's so perfect because you, you know, you take away your vision and you're just focusing on the sensors, but what, what, how did you get your start as an artist and how did it lead you to where this project is? I guess is my, my bigger mm-hmm, question. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I think it's interesting. I think for, I mean, as an artist, I always worked with 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 new media, right? I mean, we all mm-hmm. work with with technology since probably we were all very very young. And I remember back in ninety three, probably ninety two, that there was this thing called VRML, is the virtual reality for HTML, yeah. and uh, and I, 
that that time we didn't have an, uh, we didn't even had a, 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 a laptops you know we were still mm. going around with crazy computers there were probably the the smaller headset was as big as i don't know maybe like a four by four or something so um, it's very interesting vr actually is one of these medium that that start you know it's one of these dreams that really started from the very beginning of the technological revolution when it comes to to media i think you know there's there is this dream of com be completely immersed into into your creations and as a creator you know i think nobody can ask more than having your your audience completely immersed and completely engaged into your artwork i mean this is also you know wagner was already dreaming about that when he was doing theater and opera so oh, like um, some construct right like right the, right the total work of art right yeah yeah and yeah. so for me vr is that for me vr is at this point is the simplest probably way to uh to engage my audience with all the senses and um that's where i come from you know and um we are also so uh, we are of course of course it's also very good to tell stories right there's a mm -hmm. lot of talk about about empathy in in, in vr mm -hmm. Um, and, and of course, I, I, you know, I definitely agree with that, but for me, it's more about having an extension of, of your body is having an extension of your, of your senses, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. um, there was this very interesting, uh, feedback that we had once actually at the James Beard, we basically had these two guests, right? They came, they were a couple and they had this experience. And of course, after we always go through the experience we, and we talk with, with our guests and uh, and they, and she was saying, you know, like, this is amazing. You know, I can have um, a dinner with my um, with my mother that lives on the other side of the world as if you were in Hawaii. And he comes to say, what we can do with Hawaii? We can be on Mars, you know, we can be like, right. we can be like in places that don't even exist, right? Places there, and we can feel things in ways that it will never be possible in other ways, right? So, so there is this amazing potential of VR as a medium to, to let you experience things that just, you know, you can fly, you can float, you can get very small, you can become very big. Um the expansive you can, quality of it, yeah. Yeah, and you know you can start to taste uh, color, right? How mm -hmm. color red might taste like. Um, mm. You can you you can taste shapes and abstract forms. So uh, you know that won't happen in in real life. That would be very hard. Mm. So so I think yeah. that's an amazing potential, you know. And and probably the you know the 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 better quality of the graphics and the more we get closer to a to a realism. Uh, I think um, I think we'll get uh, we will open up a lot of very interesting things when it comes down to create experiences mm -hmm. in the way. Mm -hmm. And so, do you? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you go. You go. We have so many questions. Yeah, of um, course, me so too. I mean, I also I love you know the scope of your projects are it's so extensive. It requires so many different kinds of creativity. Um, but with the 3D specifically, did you, did you do the modeling or do you work with a modeler and like, how does that all like, how does that work out and how do you choose which shapes and like, you know, I know you were saying you, you did some sketching and thinking about it, but like, yeah, what's that process look like for you? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's, um, you know, like it's a multi-layer process mm -hmm. and it's always, uh, uh it is always like a, a back and forth uh, with the mm. with the chef actually. So it's um, the way how we create you know the visual representation of our bite size for this mm. uh, is a conversation. It's always actually is the most fun thing of my of the entire <laughs> the entire project because you know you get because chef really think in a completely different way of course right. Uh, there is a there is a language that you know that is based on textures you know on on flavor profiles mm -hmm. um and so for me the first layer is how to convert that kind of language when we talk about cold versus warm when we talk about consistency we talk about you know the the profiles and textures how to convey that into uh, a visual sort of uh, language and so that's mm -hmm. really the uh, the the base and then what we do also is to um, is to work on the actual scripts of the experience because actually during this 
during the experience, there is a storyline that unfolds and, and the voiceover sort of talks about, you know, how things, you know, she she basically guides you through this, this very surreal uh, mm -hmm. uh, menu where something might taste like shit, shit, the, the first time that you ever beat your lip, for example, or, mm -hmm. you know, it's she, did, she describes your menu in a very open and poetic way. So we start from that too um and then you know when then we sketch things you know we talk about for example for, for this specific one actually i started to work a lot um with text to uh image for example you know there's a lot of i'm sure you guys know there's a lot of things that come out, like, AI, AI uh, like mid journey and that that Dali. so um, i'm really getting these tools into my workflows for all my projects and uh and i found them like as, as an amazing way to start to sketch things out so interesting so for example you know here we have a sort of an initial menu that i don't want to spoil uh everybody but uh, but um you know for example one let's say that let's go for example to to one of the first um courses of the menu, one of the first bites, which is uh, Faluda, uh, which is a very, um, it's an Indian inspired uh, ice uh, that, that, serve that is that is based on uh, ice cream, uh, basically rose ice cream, vermicelli and uh, basil seeds and, and chia. And so, you know, we're, we're talking about textures, we're talking about how, how it's described. And then I start to, uh, you know, to add and to start to describe uh, how I envision a uh, visual representation of the dish into an AI model, and the AI sort of starts to 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 build all sorts of things, right? The um, mm -hmm. the uh, AI model starts to create all sorts of plates that I can work with. So there's like right. a synesthesia that's happening, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're translating one taste. It's translating into tastes into, into visuals and, and then visuals back into text. I mean, it's very much like a... It's very much a translation process, mm -hmm. all the way from text, from texts uh, to flavors to visuals. Uh, so yeah, it's very much about that. So it's me talking with the chef and then coming up with some texts and then getting the text back into AI, see what the AI is contributing to the conversation, and then basically take the the uh, mostly two dimensional images and bring them back into three D. Right. Right, right. And what just like, just in terms of tech, because we always love hearing the like nitty gritty <laughs> yeah. of all of this, what software was used for the VR environments to model the 3D? The uh, so the environment itself, we are working in Unity. Um, uh, and yeah. then for the 3D models, we are working a little bit in Cinema, Maya. Uh, there are some, I'm actually working uh, with a new tool that I love. And just to give more more advertising <laughs> it's called uh mm. it's yeah, really. it's called yeah it's basically mm. its name is kdim 3d and it's a new software that i found it's it's a it's a super new thing that actually is very cool because it is it is also based on ai model which basically translates a two dimensional image into a 3d object it's so, very cool and it's free it's very cool it's not it's not free but but it's okay. not crazy expensive but you know but it's but it's very interesting i'm just going to show you what i've been doing with this just so amazing okay so this is kadeem 3d or kadeem 3d kadeem 3d yeah okay. and it's a new you know it's an independent ai based uh, software company who they came out with this amazing solution where you you basically create you basically start by uploading a two-dimensional photo okay and the soft and then they do their magic and then they right. give you uh, a, a 3d model of that for example this let's see if it shows up this is the 3d model from the photo for example oh, it looks really clean like that's a, it looks know. pretty okay like for example actually this one looks very good actually so for example this one here this is this right so yeah. you're, then it's an AI, so it's an AI 2D image that you're then like, that they're extrapolating basically. It's, yeah, that's right. It's, it's 2D to 3D. So you feel it like a, a two-dimensional image yeah. and they give you a 3D model where, 
which you still have to texture. So, you know, I, I, I mostly, I mostly, uh, basically this is one of the many steps that we are going through our uh, workflow. We basically okay, start. Is... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, how is the topology on it? Like, is it, like, is it, you know. It's not bad. Model? I mean, it's, okay. um, this for example, it's the poly count mm -hmm. here, it's 8,000 and 600 so it's not bad okay. and the maximum you can get it's a hundred thousand uh, polygons so that's um, pretty incredible that's kind of reminds me of the level of like in photoshop when you when they started um incorporating ai processes <laughs> like when you click so on subject select or yeah. you know <laughs> and it intuits like where the edges are it, it feels like a similar kind of process but for 2d to 3d which oh that's so cool this is not yeah i mean basically this model is from this right so it's not of right. course it's not very perfect but i mean it's it's an amazing thing i mean can you imagine just to re be able to reproduce oh this God. yeah yeah i'm yeah. just thinking about all my sketches like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering. i mean this is like that this is uh very interesting to see yeah yeah yeah, yeah. what this the is um... ai uses to or what it decides mm. yeah for example this is pretty good i mean this really comes the this model here this really comes from from this photo which mm -hmm. is pretty interesting. Does it add color texture too? Can you have it? Add Not color? yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I I reached out to them and they said they're working on it. The texture one is a, is a, is an interesting problem, right? The texture right. is a, it's an interesting one. Um, but then, yeah, basically, this is just one of the steps, right? So we come up with 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 sketches, then we feed those to AI. We come out with some models, then we bring back basically these models into cinema, for example, and we and we came up with, for example, let's see if I can show you as uh, um, just okay. very some very some very simple. <laughs> for example, this is one of the things that this is one of the bites that you will that you will be eating. <laughs> Ooh. And then you come up. This is the faluda. This is uh, this is uh, this dish called roasted hops, uh, mm -hmm. ginger cookie, foie gras, and Sichuan peppercorn. Yeah, very cool. So yeah, simultaneous dish. So there is a lot of that goes into the creation mm -hmm. of uh, forms as they relate to the the textures, the mm -hmm. texture of the actual of the actual dishes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what were some of the other uh, comments that people had for you afterwards? I'm sort of curious, like what else you heard in terms of feedback from diners or maybe diners is not the right word, experiencers? Mm -hmm. Is there, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's interesting. I mean, they come out with those. Uh, it's very interesting. I, I think what, what happened most of the time is that when you say, you know, VR and food, uh, because VR is still a, a medium that is that is that is very much about uh, uh, gaming, you know, about games in yeah. the you know like for most of the people, of course, you yeah. know there is the, there is this impression that it's about you know some gamified experience or some game that involves some sort of snacks or some sort of you know some some food as a sort of trick or something, and I think one of the first things that the people I know most of the people that we talked to is that instead because the experience is so you know it's it really <laughs> requires a lot of uh focus on, on your side in a way it's not about you know gamifying things it's very much about focusing on what you're actually going to eat <laughs> and so it's and and so that really brings the people on um into a state of a uh, higher awareness of what they're actually eating so you know they really focus more on textures probably they focus more on on flavors on the, on the taste of what they're actually eating and i think that's something that that unfortunately probably in these days is not happening as much right because even when we go to a restaurant right we we are so you know we're so busy taking photos to our food or maybe just you know it's it's just the experience of of food itself it's um right it's sometimes in these days it's it's not so 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 this kind of experience i hope you know that really brings people into a state where they're really more 
more focus on what they're actually eating and really on the pleasure of and the, the joy of, of, of food. Mm -hmm. And do you come come okay. from a background of sorry, I so <laughs> no, we really are we're okay. popping in at the same moment. Um, I was just gonna ask like about you know the way you were raised with food because I have a very specific background with food. Um, my mother cooked dinner every single night and when she was out of town or she you know because she did some USO tours as a musician mm -hmm. when I was a kid and my dad mm -hmm. would plan out the meals every mm -hmm. <laughs> every time so cook food and nice. meals were long and they you know they were very long and and it's, so there's just this I have a very different relationship with dinner time and and growing up and family time and I wonder what yours was like and how that, if that related to um, this project. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, of course in Italy, you know, the, the culture of food is is, in, is insane. And, uh, but it's not just, it's a very different approach than, 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 than in, the, in the United States. You know, um, mm -hmm. it, in Italy, sharing food is the most important thing that happens within a family, right? So, so it's very much linked, you know, family time and spending time with them and um i grew up in naples which is in the south of italy where you know of course food culture is huge and um and it's been very much you know it's always been very much part of my of my heritage of course and my culture now it's very interesting that Aero banquettes never came it's never been presented to uh europe yet it's never been presented really? to italy no huh. and uh and it's because you know Italy, because of of the history of you know that we have when it comes to food, is also very very um, conservative, right? Mm. It's very strict, very conservative, and so, and so, I think I don't know why I started to do this project. I don't think it's a response to any of my you know of me being me Italian or being me in a particular you know mm. coming from a particular background. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know food is 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 a big component. I, I love to cook. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, my partner and me, you know, we cook all all, all the time, and uh, you know, and and we love to to share, you know, our love through through food. And I think it's an amazing, you know, it's an amazing thing. And um. So yeah, I, I definitely love love to cook, and I wouldn't be able to do this kind of project if I if I was not a uh, foodie yeah. myself. Yeah. Um, well, you are our very first guest here on File Exchange that brings food and VR and 3D together yeah. into a form of art, and that is very exciting. This is a File Exchange first. Yes. Today. File um, Exchange and, first. <laughs> yeah, and I think that that's yeah, it's it's so there are especially in new york city there really mm -hmm. is um kind of a you don't have a lot of friends that have you over for dinner and they make the dinner that's just not the culture here and i'm not yes. and i'm not even and i'm not dissing on the culture because i actually i personally don't like to cook all the time i do love home cooking i love to be fed <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm, I, I'm very lucky my husband is an excellent cook and, um, but he, we don't cook all the time and we don't have that like, um, as yeah, small kitchens and small apartments and your whole life. Right. Is and so I think the restaurant culture here becomes more important, you know? Right. So that's, it's they, nice to have this in, in this context. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, it's also nice to work with food because if everything goes bad, if you don't, you know, if, if, if everything goes bad and and news, you at least you're working with somebody that at least can give you some food. You know, I was the, 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 the working <laughs> with some restaurants, yeah. and uh, you know, like you know, like if if for any you know if for any reason my art career you know <laughs> will go will go bad, uh, at least I have a, a partner uh, that has a um a bunch of restaurants and um at least oh, i can yeah. get fed uh -huh. <laughs> no but yeah. yeah i mean you're definitely true this is this is very new york and i think it's i, I think new york actually in the united states it's 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 in a good spot because at least the the, the, the food culture yeah. it's so prominent and then you have so many so, to, so many beautiful restaurants and so many uh, you know some amazing cultures coming to new york um 
yeah, why 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 the states don't have a uh, food culture? I think they had it probably at a certain point, and then with the industrialization and you know big agro and everything that, that happened in the in the in the industrialization process of how we produce and how we distribute food, you know all all the local cultures probably got lost, you know, and um, and that's that's very bad. Um, yeah, I come yeah. from farming. I come from the mm -hmm. farming stock from the Midwest. So, oh, really? Okay. And mm -hmm. I, I grew up. My grandfather used to take me on tours of Midwestern farms, mm -hmm. and so it was very interesting to kind of see those processes too. But you're right; still, that removal from the source, it definitely has a role. I also think it has to do with the amount of activities we have in our lives, um, and how scheduled we are here. Um, I think even in the Midwest, like the amount of, you know, after school activities the kids have and all of these things, I don't know how anybody finds time to even pick up food, let alone make food, you know, with the amount of things they're doing. I mean, people, I mean, I and then I just yeah. think about, as we were talking about like mindful eating and having time to focus <laughs> on food, I've just been thinking of like all the dinners I've eaten that's like, you know, like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich <laughs> online in the cold waiting to go mm -hmm. on a high school tour for my, like, right. teenager, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, uh -huh. so I'm, like, 6 p.m. And all you see all the moms or they, you know, somebody's eating just, like, a Quest bar, you know, just, like, some oh <laughs> artificial saccharin-tasting chewy food analogue, yeah. like, because you're, like, rushing from place to place or you have your, like, five-minute salad that you're, like, hoovering down between your Zoom calls, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. Or the yeah. tamales that I just ate that might have picked up <laughs> in Jackson <laughs> Heights. Well, I mean, it's not that um, bad. I no, love tamales. tamales. I love tamales. No, that's, um, I live in Jackson Heights, so mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. have every kind of, like, culture represented in street food and really incredible. I'm really jealous. Um, Jackson, but huh? yeah, I actually, I have to admit here, I, food and planning dinners gives me a lot of anxiety. Oh, really? Why? Oh, really? And grocery stores and I, the idea of what are you going to eat next? Really? So huh. It's, um, it, this is something personal that I'm sharing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah. it's, I, what do you I think it's coming from? <laughs> I, I don't know if it's because growing up, I just, there was such a structure and it was always, always there. And I've always kind of wanted that to just be happening around me. So maybe mm. there's part of that. But also, I just, and and maybe it's because I grew up with such wonderful, you know, homemade food across the board mm -hmm. that I just never felt like I could live up to that or like put the mm. the energy into that. And that I'm just going to, I don't know, it just feels like another project to kind of it take sucks. on. And I just don't want to do it partially. So I don't know. There's definitely something to unpack there that I need to like talk to my therapist about. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, well, but it is interesting. I'm you know to be maybe like, that's part of it to too. Be a perfect hostess and like there's a domestic mm -hmm. you know and I think also we've had this right so I'm going off on a tangent I don't want to I know it. but it's interesting yeah but, super yeah interesting. there's pressure too you know there was like I remember in England there was like Nigella Lawson and how to be a domestic goddess <laughs> and feeling like food culture as wonderful as it is puts a little more burden on some people in the Absolutely. house to like you know you need there's a certain like you need the time you need the money um but Absolutely. maybe yeah tomorrow I'll spend a little more time on my lunch I'll make it a little bit uh, well I mean I actually <laughs> also have a lot of um anxieties not into the <laughs> cooking parts not even mm -hmm. like you know I love to cook I love to to you know to to, to strategize you know the best meals for the occasion one thing that i really i'm not good at is to have um uh, small talk conversations during oh during interesting dinner. because um, because yeah. you know because my culture is was very much about that every lunch and every dinner we had to go back you know the family had to go around the table even if you maybe sometimes especially when you're like a, you know in your 15 teenager you don't want to talk with your family well, every time no <laughs> so, no, no, no. And so th that's really interesting. You know, when you talk about um, your therapist, say, yeah, I should ask my therapist. Yeah, I should talk more yeah, about it. Yeah, I know. We, we... <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should. Maybe we should just meet in real life, all of us, and talk about I know. this. I would instead like of paying to somebody meet else, right? <laughs> I personally, I'm inviting myself. I'm inviting myself over to your apartment because I have Absolutely. to say, I would I'm... love to cook you something, and then we can talk I, about our. I'm fears. not great with. <laughs> 
And I'm not great with small talk because I'll just go right into deep things. Me too. And then I <laughs> also, I'm a great guest for enjoying food. I love Perfect. to eat people's food. Then I'm gonna, then, then you're gonna be my, my guest. <laughs> and we're gonna talk about Max. I we're gonna talk to about post structuralism. <laughs> <laughs> when no, but eat. I think. It's 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 amazing though. I, I I also felt like with VR, I I didn't. I got into all sorts of um, technology, digital technologies, and softwares later in my kind of career as an artist. So I'm a little bit. I feel a little bit different. Even like I really didn't. I wasn't immersed in computers as a young um, person, really. Um, and so VR came like was introduced to me around the same time 3d printing was which is probably early 2010 2011 2012 like kind of in that range um and when i started when i experienced vr for the first time there was this kind of intimacy and physicality and sense you know a lot of sensory relationships i actually found myself instead of wanting to play the games i just wanted to hang out in the living room space where mm -hmm, you choose mm -hmm. the games Mm -hmm. Um, and there was this like sense of home and like, yeah, like I mm -hmm. love that space. About? There's the ski chalet or there's yeah. that. <laughs> right. You can climb things. Oh, yeah. right? climb yeah. stuff. So <laughs> I just, I loved that. I, it almost felt like, you know, it, it felt like similar to when you meditate and you kind of, kind of go in your own little world and, and it just felt this kind of inner world sanctuary, um, place to explore um and and sophie had an incredible vr exhibition um during mm, the pandemic right. where we spent about an hour and i've talked about this on file exchange before but an hour where sophie was a bird and i was like an avatar and we nice. just we had an incredible conversation in the exhibition and that really has stayed with me that experience <laughs> um and it was in my i was in my bedroom i could see my cat in my peripheral um <laughs> but like it it's it, it is a powerful tool. It's just, it's difficult um, because everybody doesn't have a, a headset, but to have an experience where everybody can have a headset, I think is really smart um, as a way to get people to have that direct, but also very intimate experience. And food is very emotional. It's got so, speaking of, I mean, I'm also an emotional eater. Like it's something that, you know, <laughs> and I think about the different women in my family and their relationship with food, like both my grandmothers, like one of them was from New York and couldn't cook and was kind of a bit of a pariah because of that. And then the other one like took it like sport and she was like, I'm going to be the best cook and all everybody's going to want to be around yeah. me. And like, <laughs> so there was this like weirdly competitive aspect to cooking in my family too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, like it's such a, a, a social activity right i mean i'm just it literally is. and i think vr is really is actually one of the most social medium you know that we have mm -hmm. out there uh we probably we, we're not gonna you know we are not probably there yet but i think we are you know of course there's all all, all this talks about the uh, the metaverse you know and uh for the good of, or the bad of, of the thing you know at this point of course they're mostly games um, but I think there is a lot of, you know, there is a lot of potential for meaningful social experiences in VR, as you said, then yeah, one of our dreams, you know, with Aeropan Cats is to create a, a table as long as the entire world. So what happens if people mm -hmm. from Tokyo, from LA, from New York, from Naples, they all share um, a meal together, an actual meal. Way. They yeah. all come in from different places, but they all sharing the same virtual space interesting all right i think we're almost out of time um oh, no. wow already <laughs> well, we'll definitely you. have to continue the conversation i would um, love that at my place uh, yes totally we yes, can yes, have uh, a dinner together we can totally yeah, keep talking that. Um, and yeah, and is, is there anything, well, it's okay, tell people, we can send them a link, and I don't know if we're going to be able to get this out on, like, exactly in line with um, mm -hmm. Miami, but kind of tell people where they can find um, more absolutely, about absolutely. that. Absolutely, we are open, so please go to uh, superblue.com yeah. <laughs> okay. slash, uh, slash Ariel, and mm -hmm. we're going to open in Miami, it's going to be the very first time 
they we are doing a rabat case in, in Miami and it's gonna be from the 28th of November until December 4th. Oh, so okay. for tickets, yeah. yeah, for tickets, it's very easy. You can just go to superbrew.com slash aerial and you will yeah. find everything in here. Okay, awesome. beautiful. So, and we'll include that link in the comments as absolutely. well. Absolutely. That'd be very good. Cool. So, okay. And I hope you guys, so you're not going to come Sophie to Miami, but what about you, what about you Colette? I would love to. Not this year. Not, not this, this year. year. I have uh, too much family stuff going on. Speaking of okay. food and family. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we're hosting Thanksgiving this year, oh, which is nice. Oh, that's I'm nice. very excited. I do you're like not gonna to cook, pies. Though. I am. Gonna... I do cook. Oh, okay, so okay, do, so you're I going actually, through your traumas. <laughs> I prefer you're working baking. On it. <laughs> I prefer baking than cooking baking the like savory. Good. Yeah, yeah. And my dad is more the baker, and it's something we do together now. And he, they baked my wedding cakes, and you know, so we're yeah. yeah. I have been learning those recipes, and and I do like, I love sweets. So <laughs> sweets too. Oh my god! Yeah. I go crazy for chocolate I, and sweets. Oh yeah. yes, yes, oh, yes, yes. Um. So uh, yes, thank you again for being our guys. guest here on File Exchange, and uh, yes, we'll we'll include more information in the comments. And yeah, thank All you right. so much. Thank, thank you. you so much for having me.